Today, we're gonna to go through the installation process of a new product called the Thermostatic Oil Cooler Adapter, or TOCA for short. Hey guys, Greg here from Vibrant Performance. So are you a motorsports enthusiast like me? Whether it be carving the canyon road, hitting the track, or just a quick trip down to Mexico? Well, oil temps are critical. The TOCA is here to help. Let's get started. Laid out here are all the tools required for a successful installation. We have hose assembly tools, torque wrench, ratchets, 3 16 Allen wrench, oil filter removal tools, deep 1 in 1 8 socket to clear the threads, a nice sharp chisel or screwdriver to fold the tab lock washer, and an oil syringe to fill the lines prior to startup. Today, we're doing installation on my BRZ. As you can see here, I've got my oil cooler mounted up and my lines ready to go. The TOCA comes with a couple dash 10 ORB to dash 10 AN fittings right out of the box. But for my applications with the intake being so close, I need every little bit of real estate. I've opted to remove these and we're gonna install our forged 45 degree hose ends. So it's a little easier to install these fittings into the sandwich plate ahead of installing it into the car, just because of how tight things are. Using our V-block adjustable wrench, just make sure it's nice and tight. It is sometimes advisable to do an oil change at the same time as installing the TOCA. For my applications, I don't have to, uh, due to the location, the top mount of my oil filter. Um, but if your mount is on the side or on the bottom, most likely you're gonna have to do an oil change so that you don't have all the oil spew out from the filter. Mm. Always remember to clean the filter location. Ugh. We always want to make sure that we install any sensors or bungs ahead of installation. And just snug those down. If your application requires sensors like temperature or pressure, there's ports on both the TOCA and the sandwich adapter for that application. So before installation, we need to account for the additional stack height of the new product being placed underneath the filter. So in this instance, we've got both the OFSA as well as the TOCA, and the stack height above is gonna be three inches additional. So make sure that there's enough space for the filter to go on after the fact. One more step before getting started is selecting the right filter adapter bolt. There's five included in each kit, and depending if you get the, the kit with both the TOCA and the OFSA, or individually will depend on which bolt you use. The extended bolt is for the stack height of both, and then the stubby is just for the two individual. Be careful if you're using both these products together with the stubby to ensure to use both tab lock washers provided. Next is to determine the appropriate thread for your filter. So it can easily be done by searching the internet, or we can just take an adapter bolt and try it. Nope, that one's too big. I know this is an M20 by 1.5, and as you see, threads in great. One critical step you can't miss is lubing your O-ring. Using a little bit of oil is all that's needed. Then, once it's installed, make sure to press it in with your fingers firmly into the groove. If you're like me and you track your car pretty regularly. I like the added layer of security. A little bit of gasket maker can help. Use this very sparingly and only on the outside. Next is to line up our tab lock washer. This is to prevent the assembly from over rotating if in the event that the bolt does come loose. Easy installation, fits underneath the center lock. The tab aligns to the small hole in the sandwich adapter. Again, making sure that the O rings are installed and seated nicely. And then we're going to take the assembly over to the car. We've got the adapter plate on the car, making sure that the O rings are seated into the grooves. Critical step. Next up, we, we hand threaded in the center adapter bolt, and now we're gonna torque it down. It's important, maybe you need a friend to help you out, but keep the clocking of the sandwich plate because it will wanna turn a slight amount. The setting's 45 foot-pounds. 
Boom, and we're clocked. There's two tabs, depending on how your center bolt torques is going to tell you which tang to fold up. To bend the tab up, I use a, a flat chisel and something to protect the sandwich plate from marring of the chisel. So the goal is just to get it started and then we can use the chisel with a hammer to make sure it's completely flat up against it. You can see I've got my lines running here. Make sure that your lines are run in a way that they're not running too tight of a bend that you kink it. As you can see here, I've run dry brakes on mine. It serves a couple purposes. For one, I was testing, so I had the system in and out of the car quite a bit. We also live in Canada, so during the winter months, I really don't need the oil cooler. So what I do is I just plug the dry brakes into each other. Always make sure to run the car till it's at least operating conditions. The thermostat in the TOCA is fully open at 82 degrees Celsius. So the great thing about using dry brakes as well is I've been able to fill the oil cooler up from the bench. And now all I'm doing here is making sure that the lines are filled. So all, all I'm doing is adding a little bit of oil. This just helps the motor at startup. Just make sure that the, all the lines and oil cooler aren't filling with oil instead of pumping oil through the system. Last thing to do is just make sure there's some oil on the oil filter and uh, plug it in. So yeah, guys, we're done. Just make sure that your, your lines aren't kinking anywhere. I've used protective sleeving both thermally as well as abrasion here, uh, both found in the Vibrant catalog. You can dress it up nicely with some heat shrink. That's pretty much it with the install, guys. Enjoy the product.